Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to share another 3D printed case that I designed and made. Stick around till the very end for a little bonus. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm always open and looking for feedback from viewers in my comment section, so don't hesitate to post. In my previous video, many of you requested a case design that could use a larger video card, so this is the problem I set up to solve. The main part of the case was printed like shown. I used tree supports to cut down on the printing time and amount of printer filament used. You can pause the video here to see the settings that I used for my Sidewinder X1. It may not be the best settings though, as you will see later. It's not the first time this has happened for my 3D printed cases, but I had another issue mid-print. The hot end must have clogged with debris and I had to learn how to restart a print since it was not something my printer could auto-resume. Long story short, I was able to salvage the print that was 90% done by keeping the bed and hot end at operating temperatures while I watched and read endless tutorials on the matter. You can clearly see where the print failed in the end but I'm still happy that I was able to continue the print and learn something new. With the print completed, it was just a matter of processing and finishing the part. It always amazes me with what the software will generate for tree supports. I love how organic and artificial the tree supports turn out. I tried my best to pull off what I could with my bare hands. But I only got so far until I had to bring out the hand tools. If your printer is good enough, these supports and rafts should come off without the use of hand tools. Remember to wear the proper eye protection and be mindful when using sharp tools. There's a lot of boogers and defects that needed the use of this blade. Your printer might not have these problems though. This PC case uses a rail system for the side panels, so pay extra attention to make sure the channels are clear. It took a lot of scraping to get all the boogers out of the channels. Like my other cases, I will be using these 632 heat inserts for any parts that need screws. I like heat inserts because it means I don't wear out my screw holes. When I first started using these heat inserts, it was a bit daunting because it involved melting the part I just spent hours or days printing. But trust me, once you have done just a few, it really is an easy and worthwhile process. The heat inserts for this case have a specific side and orientation, but don't worry too much about this, since most heat inserts can actually work either way.
With these final heat inserts, the processing for the main part is now finally complete. The side panels are printed so that the top and bottom layer are omitted. This will leave you with a part that just has walls and the infill exposed to form a mesh structure. When you visit the link to where my STLs are, you will see two versions of the side panels. One will have tight tolerances and the other one will have very large tolerances for printers that are not so precise, like mine. Back when I was just daydreaming about 3D printing cases, I thought I had to drill out holes or individually design the mesh for panels, and I'm so glad that smart people at the 3D printing community came up with this technique that I'm using today. I use a brim for my parts so they stay attached to my print bed, but if you can print without a brim, it will reduce the amount of processing you need to do. Luckily, the processing for the panels is straightforward. If you have boogers or flashing on the rail sides of the panels, make sure they are cleaned up so the panels can slide smoothly. The top and bottom panels are printed in the same way as the side panels. Pay attention to the edges here since they will be very visible once installed. I like to lightly remount the screw holes so that insulation goes smoothly. The last parts to print, well, sort of, are the GPU and PSU brackets. I was able to print these without supports or a brim. I also set it so that each part would finish entirely before moving to the next part. This ensured less traveling of the printer head.
This side of the case will house the motherboard. On the other end is where the GPU will be, with its tab facing up. This holds for the power switch. Down below is where the PSU will be. It can only be installed in one direction. The GPU bracket goes here. These slots were designed to help with cable management. The cables from the PSU can travel up both sides of the case so that you can connect power to the motherboard or the GPU if it requires it. The one I'm using only draws power from the PCI slot. Along each edge of the case is the rail system that will house the side panels. These two heat inserts will attach to the PCIe riser cable that will run from the motherboard side and over the separating wall. This will connect the GPU to the motherboard. The cable management slots can be used from both sides. Here you can see the two heat inserts for the lower part of the motherboard. And again, the higher heat inserts are for the PCIe riser cable. The middle heat insert found on the lower row is for the PSU bracket. The PSU bracket will attach to the PSU and then will hang from this heat insert. This bracket will stabilize the PSU so you can choose which side of the case is up or down. Here's another look at the rail system for the side panels. You can see how important it is to keep these zipped and booger free. The side panels have these edges that will interface with the rails. Again, I will be providing both low and high tolerance models for you to try out to see which one best fits. The top and bottom panels will attach to the case using screws at each corner. They are put on after the side panels have slid into place and will sandwich the side panels in place. I put a bevel on the screw holes if you want to use tapered screws. The little slot that you see on the GPU bracket slips over the GPU slot tab. I hope it fits the card you're going to be using with the case. This heat insert will be helpful in stabilizing the GPU when it's installed in the case. Again, this slot will capture the GPU tab and will then attach firmly to the case. To put it all together, I first thread in the standoffs for the motherboard side. It's pretty straightforward, but these are the four standoff locations for the motherboard. I then install the I.O. panel like so. Some motherboards have these built in, so no need if that's the case. Then I slide the motherboard in place, making sure that all the tabs on the I.O. panel are where they need to be. The four motherboard screws then need to be screwed in. With the motherboard stable, you can now install the PCIe riser cable to the motherboard. On the GPU side, it's time to install the standoffs that will hold the other end of the PCIe riser cable. Make sure the standoffs are snug, since they will be supporting your GPU's weight. Begin by locating the right holes and hand threading in the screws that will hold the PCIe riser cable. Then tighten the screws with a screwdriver, making sure the cables stay aligned to the bottom edge. The GPU can then be installed like so. Make sure it's fully seated before moving on. Slide the GPU bracket over the tab, then screw it in place. 
and check to see if the GPU stays upright. The power button I'm using has wires that are too short, but I will show you how I was able to extend the wires very easily. The button itself has a straightforward installation with a simple threaded ring and washer. I have these pin connectors from an old Arduino kit that work perfectly for extending the wires for the power button. The pins fit perfectly and they're secure. Just to be on the safe side, I used some electrical tape to make sure they stay together. I used my motherboard manual to figure out where the wires needed to go. The PSU bracket is first attached to the PSU. You might need to enlarge the holes to fit your PSU if it's not the same as mine. I separated out my cables based on where the cables needed to be. There is more room on the GPU side so I placed all my unused cables on that side. I then proceed to install the rear screws of the PSU to attach it to the case. The PSU bracket is tightened to the case separating wall, and it makes for a solid attachment. Plug in the power connectors needed for your PC, and try to keep the excess bundling near the cable management area. You can then use some zip ties to cinch down all the excess cables for better airflow and a neater build. In my previous video, someone mentioned I can improve the cable management, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. What do you think? I found the speaker for the motherboard while rummaging for parts, and I figured, why not install it? I chose to keep the PSU in the bottom, and so I'm going to install the bottom panel first. I'll have all the parts and tools listed for this build in the description. I had some rubber feet from another project, and I figured it would be fun to install them. These are obviously optional. Flipping over the case will make things easier. The side panel should slide right in using the rail system and stop at the bottom panel. With both side panels slid in place, the top panel can now be installed using the four screws. Lastly, the antennas are installed and PC assembly is done. If you made it this far, I want to give you my sincerest thanks for watching. It was really fun making this PC case, and I hope that some of you out there found this video useful or entertaining. I have a lot more to share. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Feel free to comment down below if there was something you wanted to see as well. And if you stayed around this long, why not check out the bonus section coming right up?
Not only did some viewers want to see a case with larger GPU support, some asked for better cooling too, so check this out. This is an optional piece that will allow you to install two slim 92mm fans for this case. I went with some Noctuas in this build to keep things quieter. The bonus piece is printed in the same way as the side, top, and bottom panels, so it will be familiar now. The same thing can be said about the processing of the parts as well. The fans will be attached to the piece using normal fan screws that came with the fans. When installing the bonus piece, longer screws are required and I'll have that listed in the description below. Because this is going into an ITX build, fan headers are a premium and we will be using a splitter that is included with the fans. Normally you want to install the side panels first, but because of the fan wires, you will need to position the bonus piece on top while giving enough room for the side panel to slide in. Then it's just a matter of screwing in the four screws to secure the bonus piece. It's with no surprise that the addition of the exhaust fans keeps the PC cool under operation, since this was also the case without the fans. But I know some of you might be using hardware that will produce more heat than the components I am using here. Thanks again for sticking around. Let me know which version of this case you like more, the one with the simple vented top or the one with the fans. Enjoy the rest of the hero shots. Thanks.